Hey friends, welcome to today's video. Today we are doing the tag that I believe Emily Noel started. I know I've seen it circulating around YouTube and some people have modified it a bit. It's been really fun to watch, but it is the what is in my fantasy shopping cart at Sephora with a thousand dollar budget. So this was really fun because I got on Sephora.com and I shopped and I added things to my cart, things that I have wanted for a long time, things that have been on my wish list and I still haven't purchased. And then a few things that I currently own that I love so much that I had to add it because they definitely are um, things that I would add if I had a thousand dollar shopping budget. So let's go ahead and get started. I have everything here, but I will include little screenshots or screen records of um, these items on Sephora's website. So the first one is the Natasha Denona Star Palette. This retails for $169, and this I put some thought into because I know everyone's talking about the bronze palette right now, and I went to the website, I looked at all the palettes that uh, Natasha Dinner currently has, and I found this one to be the one I would really splurge on. It's $169, which is more of the higher price point of her palettes, and it just really is so beautiful. I could see myself really putting this palette to work and using it, um, it really being like a frequent product in my rotation. I feel like a lot of times I'll buy palettes because they're new, and I'll you know wear them for a couple weeks, and then they kind of get put in a drawer, and then that's it. This one I could really see being one that's stayed on my vanity, one that I hit pan on several shades. It has 18 shades. You get a lot of warm bronze, pinks, and purples. I just think it's a very sultry, gorgeous, neutral palette. So that would be the one that I would choose from her collection. The next product is the Tom Ford Traceless Soft Matte Foundation. It retails for $88. I was looking at the reviews that they had. This one only had two, and it had one, I think it was a five-star review that was made by someone who had a sample of it that had used it several days. And then it had a one-star review from someone that had never purchased the product. I think their review was, what did they say? They said something like it had an ingredient that irritates the skin and they would be passing on this product. So from that, I took that they didn't actually try it, but they kind of decided that they wouldn't try it, you know, for their own reasons. And so I was like, well, how can you give it a one-star review if you haven't tried it yet? Uh, so... But there was only two reviews. But what I what really intrigues me about this foundation is it's a soft focus hydrating matte foundation, um, and it has medium to full coverage. I definitely would wear it more on the medium side. I probably wouldn't build it up to get a full coverage, but it, it's kind of on my wish list. I'm really curious to try this foundation. Will I purchase it? Probably not. Um, the only foundations that I own at that price point are the La Mer and the Coke and Doe, and both of those I sat on that decision for like way too long. But I I'm really hesitant to spend that much money on a foundation. So I probably won't be trying that one, but if I had a thousand dollars to to do it, I probably would. Okay, the Tom Ford blush is one that has been on my wish list for a very long time. It retails for sixty three dollars, and the uh, specific shade that I want is the shade Inhibition. So I almost bought this blush, and I forget which trip it was. If it was in, when I was in Houston or when I was in Vegas, but it was when I was on a little on a trip with other YouTubers or blogger friends, and I remember I can't remember which trip it was, but I remember going to the Tom Ford counter falling in love with it, wanting it. I think whoever I was with purchased it too. And I like almost bought it, but then I talked myself out of it. But that's on my wish list. Inhibition, Tom Ford blush, $63. The next product I have almost purchased several times. And I, I actually probably am just going to order this because it's, um, it's the Dior Backstage Face and Body Foundation. It retails for $40. Um, it has like over 2000 reviews. It's a natural finish and it's medium buildable coverage. Um, that is sweat and water resistant. So that is like checks all my boxes, especially right now in the summertime in Texas. I've almost purchased this foundation. I don't know why I haven't yet. I think every time I've gone, um, I, the last time I went to Sephora, which was maybe a month ago, you couldn't touch samples. You couldn't test anything. And I just didn't, I don't know why I didn't get it. I need to get this foundation. I, I really don't know why I don't have it yet. So if you have tried this foundation, I would love to know what you think about it. Let me know um, in the comment section below because I want it. I think I'm going to get it. The next product is a product that I do own that I'm about to run out of my first bottle. I have a second bottle, but it's SK2 Essence, Patera Essence. I did a video on this a few months ago, um, and I love this product, you guys, but it does retail. Well, they have different sizes, so you can get it. I think the smallest size they have 
is 100 or do they have one that's less than that? I'm not sure, but I would get the $185 bottle. It's a 5.4 ounces. I have had it, I wanna say since February, and I think I have maybe like a fifth of it left, not quite a fourth, but a fifth. So here we are July. So, I mean, I would say a bottle lasts a good six months. Um, do I use it every single day? I do use it every day. I don't use it twice a day. I've kind of gone back and forth between using it twice a day and now once a day. Um, but so obviously if you use it twice a day, you might go through it quicker, but it has lasted me about six months. Um, the next product is the Juliet Has a Gun, not a perfume fragrance, but in the larger 3.3 ounce bottle. I love this fragrance. I have worn it for a couple years now. It's my favorite uh, spray-on fragrance. I have an oil from Whole Foods that I love called Amber that is, ugh, those two are, I can't decide which one I love more, but the Juliet Has a Gun, not a perfume is so beautiful. It's very like uh, woody and earthy, and it's described on the website as being a perfume for people who don't like to wear perfume. Perfume. It's not sweet. It's not overpowering. It just smells clean and crisp. Um, it's so nice. And they the 3.3 ounce bottle retails for $135. This has been one that um, I've had in my cart so many times for Sephora sales and I never get it. And um, I think my biggest hesitation for buying it is, is not the price or anything, but it is the fact that I really don't wear perfume every day. I forget. <laughs> I'm not someone that like remembers to wear it all the time. So I always buy, I think they're like $30 or $28, the little tiny like travel size ones. And those last me a long time. But if you go on my vanity now, you'll see like three of those like stocked up. Um, so I should probably just buy the bottle. Um, the next product that I have on the list is the Armani Eye Tints. I have the shade nine, which is like, a, it's described as I think cool copper on the website. Um, and I would get two shades. They retail for $30 each. I would get the shade eight, no, number eight, which is flannel. And I'd get the shade number 12, which is gold ashes. I really like this liquid eyeshadow because it is so like light and you can blend it out to be really sheer. It's not heavy or thick. The shimmer of it is so like fine. So it's great for more textured eyelids. Um, sometimes I get a lot of questions like, you know, if I have more mature eyelids or wrinkles around the eyes, should I be wearing shimmer? And my answer is it depends, you know, shimmer can magnify texture and make it more, look more obvious, but a cream or a liquid shadow is the way to go. If you want to wear shimmer, in my opinion, um, because it just, it looks so much more like sheer and natural and you can really manipulate it to look uh like one with the skin it is so beautiful so i would add those two shades to my cart uh the next product that i would add to my cart is a product that i had years ago that i loved loved this product and um I think the only reason that I haven't kept up like purchasing this product is because I think of all the products that I receive as far as PR, it's overwhelmingly a lot of skincare products. Um, I don't really get a whole lot of makeup products. I get a lot of skincare products. So I have a drawer of just like backlogged skincare products. And um, so uh, unfortunately that's kind of the one category that I don't find myself shopping a lot because I have this, you know, this backlog of products to use that have been gen so generously gifted to me from PR. And um, the one product though that I love and I want to go back to trying is the Drunk Elephant Baby Facial. It retails for $80. It's a mask that you use once a week. It's been a long time since I used this product, but I do remember when I first tried it being so impressed with it. I remember applying it on the skin and immediately feeling like a kind of a stronger tingling sensation. I remember thinking if you had sensitive skin, it might be too much for you. Um, and then it, but it just left the skin so bright. It exfoliates and removes the like layer of dead surface dead skin cells on the surface of the skin. Really bright, beautiful glow. It is such a great standout product, I believe, from that particular line of products. I remember using several Drunk Elephant products and really liking most of them. Uh, but again, it's a brand I haven't used in a long time just because it's hard to go buy like a cleanser or a SPF cream or something when I have, you know, three or four options that, that I have here. So that's the only reason I, ha I don't really find myself purchasing a lot of skincare. The next and last product is the Pat McGrath Divine Rose Collection Eye Palette. Uh, it retails for $125 and I think this palette is so beautiful. It's real like warm and rosy neutral shades. Very, very flattering, very, very feminine. It's got a lot of bronze and gold and rosy shades to it. And her 
particular formula of shadows is, I think, one of the best. I feel like it's kind of right up there with Natasha Denona, um, just really quality, creamy um, mattes and shimmer in like foiled shades. I feel like a lot of brands can either get one formula right and they kind of like the ball drops on the others. Um, but I feel like Pat McGrath and Natasha Denona, um, and while we're talking about it, it's not Sephora brand, but Sydney Grace, which I just used on my eyes today. This is another brand that I really feel like every formula they come out with is just you know, just top notch. And so that uh, Pat McGrath palette would be added to. And so total, I come to just over a thousand dollars. I think with tax, it was like a thousand twenty dollars. So hope you guys give me some grace on that. But that would be my dream uh, cart if I had a thousand dollars to shop at Sephora. I would love to know what products you would pick up. Um, let me know in the comments section below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, thank you, Emily, for starting this tag. I'm going to leave Emily's video to this tag, original tag, down below so you can check that out. But thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.